A vicious predator ambushes a mountain biker with explosive force. It's like getting hit by a vehicle. The mountain lion moves straight for the kill. He separated my ear from my skull. With jaws like a vice. His fangs, one broke my nose, the other went into my upper lip. The beast inflicts gruesome damage. It was like a hot knife through butter. Her friend fights desperately to save her. Help had to come quick. But the odds are overwhelming. <laughs> Things started to go black. This is basically the end of my life. In the wild, when things go bad, they go bad fast. Without warning, your life can hang by a thread. Adventurer and survivor Craig DiMartino fought back from his own wilderness disaster to reclaim his life. Now Craig meets other courageous outdoorsmen who beat the odds and return from their own fight to survive. Hi, I'm Craig DiMartino. Enjoying the outdoors in rugged areas can come with inherent risks, and certain outdoor activities have more risk than others. I know that all too well from my own accident. But for Ann Yella, a day of mountain biking on a familiar trail near Mission Viejo, California, should have been virtually risk-free. That is until a rare and unpredictable mountain lion attack left her in a fight for her life. Ann Yella was an adventurous tomboy growing up in Apple Valley, Minnesota. One thing I remember, my parents limited us to one hour of TV a day, so we were told, get outside and go find, find your own fun. Ann grew to be a strong, independent woman. And at 19, she shocked her family when she enlisted in the Marine Corps. She was stationed in Southern California, the perfect spot for someone with a passion for the outdoors. I worked as a hydraulics mechanic on helicopters, and I actually really enjoyed my job, and it's what really allowed me to fall in love with California and the reason I live here today. Mountain biking became her sport. One of her favorite rides was a nearby Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park and a narrow twisting trail called Cactus Hill. A mountain bike race even ignited the courtship with her husband, James. I had passed this girl on the road just before we got off onto the dirt. James has a tough exterior, very experienced martial artist, but he has this tender heart. She's stuck in my mind, you know, and, and it's kind of like those voices go off like, that's the one. It turned out they had mutual friends, and things moved quickly from there. I knew she was the one I was going to marry literally within a week, so I think I was four or five weeks before I proposed. <laughs> one of Ann's favorite biking partners was Debbie Nichols. They're both hardcore riders. We were similar and wanting to kind of just focus and no nonsense that kind of riding. We both like to have fun, but we like to just get out there and ride. On Thursday, January 8th, 2004, Ann and Debbie set out for a short ride after work. We were going to do a quick 45 minute loop, get in and out. They climbed to four corners. Want to hit Cactus? All right. I'm and then go. dropped into Cactus Hill Trail for a fast ride down. And I just didn't have any idea how my life would change after that day. Anne was speeding along in the lead when suddenly she came upon another rider. Is everything okay? Yeah, I, I found an abandoned bike. When he said that, I thought he's joking around with me. I thought he's he's just messing with me. So I actually continued on and really didn't think much of what he had just told me. How's it going? And pushed ahead and careened down the narrow trail. I came up over a little rise and was just about to head down for the final descent on the trail when I caught just a glimpse, this flash of movement. My first thought was that I had just startled a deer and that the deer was gonna jump across the trail. There was no time to even complete her thought. I felt a very strong impact. I felt the animal grab a hold of me and I knew right away, this is no deer. And Yella was in the death grip of a mountain lion. Mountain biker Ann Yella was speeding down a narrow trail when she was ambushed by a ravenous mountain lion. Okay. I'll follow you. Okay. She took Craig on the same trail she rode that fateful day.
I think we're getting close. It looks like it was right here. So he was yeah. hiding up in this kind of scrubby stuff. Right. And you never even saw anything. No. Because I was, you know, you're moving pretty quickly down the trail. Right. And uh, just focused on the trail. And as I rode past, I just remember seeing this flash of movement over my right shoulder. Mountain lions, also known as cougars, can leap 40 feet to strike their prey. The mountain lions hunt by stealth and ambush. They hit the animal hard, latch on with their claws, and then reach around and kill the animal by suffocation. And Yella was up against the perfect predator. The impact is like nothing I've ever experienced before. I mean, I, I can only imagine it's like getting hit by a, a vehicle. The lion's razor sharp claws ripped into Anne's shoulders. The animal was so strong and I cried out, Jesus help me. The lion had grabbed me by the back of the neck, but I could tell he was making an effort to move around uh, to the front. So what he would do is grab me by my neck and drag me a foot or two and then readjust. So when he readjusted, he clamped down over my left ear and separated my ear from my skull. He readjusted again. This time he clamped down onto the left side of my face. So his upper fangs, one broke my nose, the other went into my upper lip and the lower fangs went into my cheek and as he closed down his grip it was like a hot knife through butter my face I could feel it just peel away the mountain lion can pick up an animal that weighs more than itself and run with it jump with it carry it for up to a half mile and even go over fences in the process and the thing that was shocking to me was how easily he did it it felt like nothing at that moment it's the only time I thought I couldn't handle what had just happened to me and I told myself I would rather die. But then James flashed in her mind. And my next thought was of my husband and thinking he would want me to fight. And so just in that instant, it's like switching gears and you know, being ready to give it my all. She called on the martial arts James had taught her. Even though I felt very helpless and overpowered, I was trying to punch with my right arm over my shoulder, and I was hitting him in the face, but it had no effect at all. It had only been seconds since the start of the attack, but for Anne, time was standing still. Then Debbie approached the gruesome scene. I start hearing this really horrific screaming. I see a large mountain lion. He has me by the face, and I'm looking up, and I'm seeing Debbie's face, and the look of terror, and more than anything, she's angry. Debbie reacted with blind rage, and the only weapon she had. I throw the bike, thinking that's gonna do something, and it doesn't. She could see he was moving down into the ravine, dragging me by my head, and she grabbed onto my calf and it basically became a tug of war between the lion and Debbie. Debbie trying to slow his progress. Debbie is a mother and grandmother, and perhaps maternal instinct fueled her extraordinary courage. He was incredibly strong. I couldn't believe that he could move both of us with my heels sticking in, and he was pulling both of us, you know, just filleting her face wide open. And I'm just saying to her, Anne, I'm not letting go, I'm not letting go, and I'm just, praying in my mind, you know, God give me the strength. Debbie continued to ignore all risk to herself and refused to let her friend die. I'm not letting go! But the mountain lion maintained a laser focus on his prey. He didn't ever snarl at me. He didn't really any engagement with my eyes. Now, Anne felt the beast moving closer to her throat and the final kill. One of the things they teach you in martial arts is if someone is going for a choke, you bring your chin to your shoulder and you try to um, close that gap so that they can't get a choke on you. So I tried to kind of maneuver my head to make it so my neck wasn't so exposed, but he went for the front of my neck and closed down his grip and it felt like a vice. Right away, things started to go black, and I knew, you know, this is basically the end of my life. I remember looking at Debbie, basically saying goodbye to my friend, this is it. And I blacked out. And that was 
the last I remember. Angela was being mauled by a mountain lion. While her friend Debbie Nichols tried to hold on to Anne, beat off the wild cat, and scream for help. It's just instinct to not let go, to just be holding on with your life, you know, to dear friend. Help had to come quick. It wasn't going to be a situation that could go on very long. Other mountain bikers appeared on the trail. Finally, one rock got the predator's attention. They hit the mountain lion on the back of his neck, and he took off. I'll call 911. This area normally had no cell service, but miraculously, yeah, one of the riders got a signal and contacted 911. Yeah, we got a woman. She's been attacked by a mountain lion. Help's on the way. Stay with me. Can you hear me? I came to, and I was shocked that I was still alive. <laughs> And I was laying on my back. I couldn't get any air. I just felt like I was drowning. And I realized I was probably choking on my own blood. You guys help us out. Help us out. All right, 911's on their way. Easy, easy, easy. And up. Good. Very good. Very good. I could feel the weight of my cheek hanging down. It's almost like you feel a, a steak hanging off your face. You know, it felt very strange and unusual. From the end of my eyebrow, in a crescent shape to my mouth, this big hunk of meat was peeled back to my nose. Are you okay? It's still out there, right? <laughs> okay. Stay with us. It wasn't long after that that I could see paramedics with a board coming down the trail. I felt a relief that, you know, there was somebody that was going to help and get her out of here quickly. Ma'am, can you hear me? Are you conscious? Yeah. Everything is going to be OK, OK? The paramedics arrived in just 19 minutes. One of the paramedics was shaking badly as he did his work. Just try and relax, OK? One of the helicopter pilots flying overhead could see the mountain lion crouch down right down that hillside. So here this paramedic is working, knowing the lion is to his back. One, two, three, and lift. <laughs> you got this. You're right. The skilled medevac pilot was able to maneuver the helicopter into the rugged area and airlifted Anne to Mission Hospital. In the operating room, doctors assessed the severity of her injuries, the displacement of half her face, two severed facial nerves, and numerous bite wounds three and four inches deep. But despite the extensive damage, she would survive. It was nothing short of a miracle. I have 20 plus bite wounds to my neck, and yet carotid artery, jugular vein, esophagus, voice box, none of these things are hit. I just don't know how you can explain that. Her vital signs were stable, so plastic surgeon Dr. Christopher Nolan went to work. Six and a half hours of surgery. The majority of the time was spent cleaning debris out of the facial wound. As my plastic surgeon has described it, it's as though someone opened that flap and took a fistful of dirt and just chucked it in there. Just an absolute mess. The next challenge was to find and reattach the ends of the facial nerves. It's as though you're looking for a needle in a haystack. It's nearly impossible. Uh, they did find those branches and reattach them, so that was uh, amazing miracle to me as well, because that's something that would not, uh, you know, if they're not reattached, it's not going to regenerate at all. As we entered the room, um, we, you know, we joke, um, trying to make light of the situation. She says, good thing you were there. And I said, it's crazy. We have God to thank, you know, he really watched over us. Over 200 stitches and staples held Anne's face together. Can you see him here? Yeah. She survived physically, but now she must deal with immense emotional challenges. For the first time since the attack, Anne was about to look in the mirror. Anne Yellow had survived a ferocious mountain lion attack. 
At the hospital, surgeons have tried to reconstruct her face. Can I see a mirror? Now, the day after surgery, she insisted a nurse bring her a mirror. You know, you look in the mirror expecting to see your reflection that you look at every day, let's say. But I didn't recognize anything. All I can see is just this grossly swollen face, stitches everywhere. It's gonna be okay, all right? You're getting much better very quickly. <sighs> but then she looked at the pre-operation photos. This is what it was before. You're already so much better. As horrible as that looked in the mirror, it's still better than what it was 12 hours ago. I love you. So I took the mindset that it might not ever look how it looked before, but focusing on the fact that I'm so thankful to be alive and realizing whatever I'm seeing is gonna gradually get better. Incredibly, after just eight days, Anne was able to leave the hospital. She wanted to return to normal life, but the ever-present stairs made that impossible. People are walking towards me and I just see them look and do a double take. Craig remembered how concerned he was for the immense strain his injuries would put on his wife, Cindy. Thinking about the wedding vows with Cindy was, you know, for better, for worse, this is kind of feeling all worse uh -huh. and sickness and in health, and it was mostly sickness. Were you thinking that way with James? Were you worried about that? I guess my, my biggest concern with James was knowing that he was extremely loyal and dedicated to our marriage no matter what. So it was more that I felt it was a raw deal for him, but you know, I knew that during this time when I was helpless and he did everything for me, that it did bring us closer together. Here we go. I don't see scars. You didn't have to do that. I didn't see the injuries. I mean, all I see is my beautiful wife. You're getting better so fast, though. Thank you. As it turns out, oh. Anne wasn't the only victim of that mountain lion that day. When the helicopter was airlifting Anne to the hospital, they made a circular pass and somebody noticed uh, a body on the ground. It was the remains of the owner of the lone mountain bike that was found on the trail. Unfortunately, he did not survive his encounter with the mountain lion. With two attacks in one day, the California Department of Fish and Game mobilized quickly. Attacks in our parks are very rare and I would even say in general, California has only had 16 confirmed attacks in the last 125 years. This was clearly a rogue animal that had to be tracked and shot before it killed again. The victim was identified as 35-year-old Mark Reynolds. Today, Anne is dear friends with Mark's family, and she's active with the Mark J. Reynolds Memorial Fund a charity that gives bicycles to underprivileged children and promotes biking safety. Since the attack, Anne has endured six more reconstructive surgeries that Dr. Christopher Nolan has generously performed for free. Before long, Anne returned to her normal life, to her job as a personal trainer and her passion, mountain biking. Through her book, Skin Deep, Anne has shared her story and hopes it will inspire others who deal with adversity in life. Without my faith, without James, it would be a very different situation. And obviously Debbie, I mean, what else can you say? I do not know if I could do what she did. I would like to think I would. I can't say that I would. I hope I would but, you know, she did it. I'm going to go! Having this experience, it's, uh, you look for reasons to explain it. And I think, for me, it was just to know that God is real, that if you reach out to Him, that He can give you strength in times of you know, a desperate situation, which he did. Help's on the way, stay with me. Can you hear me? A lot of people will say yeah. to me, oh, that's such a me? tragedy. I don't see it that way. I see it as, as an absolute miracle that I'm still alive. I'm so thankful 
to, to be here. She and James now have a beautiful daughter named Elsa. James and I actually named Elsa after a lioness in the story Born Free. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like I'm trying to make deliberate attempts to take what most people would see as tragedy, horrific, and to bring positive out of it. <laughs> I want her then to be able to see that, uh, again, that the, the fear I may have experienced is not controlling me. Where are the birds? Do you see any more? I think she just made the choice that she wasn't going to have this this external thing kind of dictate how she's going to live her life. You going to go for a ride? I call her my jarhead, you know, and so she's, a, she's an ex-marine. Well, I, there is no ex-marines. Once marine, always marine. It's Anne. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all you want to do is live life to the fullest at that point, because tomorrow might not come. And that's the reality of it. And focusing on time spent with family and friends and relationships and being uh, spontaneous and just enjoying life, yeah. Anne's survival from the vicious mountain lion attack is nothing short of a miracle. But it's also a testimony to the inner strength Anne possesses to stay alive, not only in the physical fight with the cougar that held her in its jaws, but also the fight to reclaim her life in the aftermath of the attack. Hers is a doubly impressive fight to survive.